the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, the Speaker of the Parliament endorses the certificates on the bill titled Sri Lanka Telecommunications, while the Cabinet of Ministers has granted approval to publish the revised online safety bill. Energy and Power Minister says that Sri Lanka will pay 27 rupees a unit for rooftop solar electricity beginning from this month. The stock exchange ends in the green as both indices show a positive sentiment by the end of today's trading sessions. And NVIDIA is developing a variant of its latest flagship AI chips, specifically for the Chinese market, to comply with existing US export regulations. A very good evening and thank you very much for joining us on the Nightly Business Report. Starting off, the Deputy Speaker of the Parliament, Ajit Rajapaksa, announced to the House that in terms of the provisions of Article 79 of the Constitution of the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka, Speaker Mahinda Yapa Abewardhana has endorsed the certificates on the bill titled Sri Lanka Telecommunications. Meanwhile, the Cabinet of Ministers has granted approval to publish the revised online safety bill in the Government Gazette and to table it in Parliament. On the 9th of July, the Sri Lanka Telecommunications Bill was passed in Parliament with amendments. Under the new Telecommunications Bill, Sri Lanka will introduce a new license category that will allow Starlink service to enter the country's telecommunications as licensed service provider as early stated by the State Minister of Technology, Kanaka Herat. The initiative of integrating the global Starlink network with Sri Lanka is said to be aimed at addressing the Wi-Fi connectivity issues, particularly in areas outside Colombo. Meanwhile, the Cabinet of Ministers has granted approval to publish the revised online safety bill in Government Gazette and to table it in the Parliament. The Department of Government Information said that in line with the decision given by the Supreme Court on the draft bill on the security of the online methods known as Online Safety Bill and subsequent to be passed in Parliament, the Security of Online Methods Act No. 9 of 2024 is now in operation. It added that before the bill was passed in Parliament, the experts in the field have expressed their concerns for amendments of certain sections in the bill, yet there was no possibility to include such amendment proposals in the bill at the committee stage. Moreover, Minister Bandulu Gunavardara, the Cabinet spokesman, mentioned during the Cabinet edition's press briefing held today that the severe economic crisis that prevailed in the country had both direct and indirect adverse impacts on every sector. As a result, the pawning of gold jewellery has increased rapidly. The amount of pawn capital, which was around 210 billion rupees in 2019, had risen into 571 billion rupees by March 2024. This represents a 172% increase. The signing of the Memorandum of Understanding for the Provision of Interest-Free Loans to Agribusiness Entrepreneurs and Farmers under the first phase of the Agriculture Modernization Program took place yesterday at the Presidential Secretariat. The MOUs were signed between the Bank of Ceylon, the Regional Development Bank, who are the key contributors to the initial phase, and the Secretary to the Ministry of Agriculture and Plantation Industry, Janaka Dharmakirti. Accordingly, the MOU with People's Bank are expected to be signed in the near future. In the first phase, 650 million rupees have been allocated to implement projects through agriculture modernization centers in 26 secretariat divisions selected for pilot projects with a total of 75 DS divisions identified. In the implementation of agriculture modernization projects within the DS divisions, more than 30% of the project costs are covered by agribusiness entrepreneurs and farmers with the remaining 70% funded by the government. To facilitate a revolving credit scheme, the government's contribution to provide as an interest-free loan under the Agricultural Modernization Credit Scheme can be recovered by a selected bank by the beneficiary from among the Bank of Ceylon, People's Bank and Regional Development Bank. A cabinet memorandum presented by President Rani Vikramasinghe to establish and implement this system has been approved. <laughs> The census for the second phase of the Aswasuma Welfare Benefit Program is scheduled to be completed on the 31st of July. Additionally, for families who missed the opportunity to apply during the first phase, applications were called again in February, resulting in approximately 454,924 new applications. Welfare Benefits Board Chairman Jayanta Vijayaratna stated that the census work related to these applications has already begun. Addressing the special briefing held at the Presidential Media Centre, Welfare Benefits Board Chairman Jayanta Vijayaratna highlighted that the highest number of applications have come from Norelia and Badula districts. 
The information collection for each application in the census is conducted using a IWMS software. Thousands of Sri Lanka's Asfesuma poverty alleviation beneficiaries face delay in receiving funds due to the duplication of their national identity card numbers. Moreover, more than 135,000 Sri Lanka's Asfesuma poverty alleviation beneficiaries cannot receive their monthly dues due to the lack of bank accounts. Census officers have been appointed for each Grama Nildari division and will visit households to verify the information of family members, which will be entered into the Social Security Information Register via the mobile application. Sri Lanka's Minister of Foreign Affairs has said that Poland will consider Sri Lankan workers in specific sectors through a government-to-government -government agreement for employment. Sabri, who is on an official visit to Poland, met Poland's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Radoslav Sikorski. Minister Sabri stated that visa facilitations are to be eased too, as he concluded a successful visit to Poland, and that he thanks his counterpart Radoslav Sikorski for proposing this novel initiative at his request. Sri Lanka is looking to strengthen ties with Poland and other Central European countries in the EU. Energy and Power Minister Kanchana Vijayasekara has said that Sri Lanka will pay 27 rupees a unit for rooftop solar electricity from July of 2024, which is sufficient enough for solar operations to install and also make a profit. The Energy Minister and Ceylon Electricity Board raised the price paid to the rooftop solar to 37 rupees for a 20-year contract when the rupee depreciated steeply and interest rates were high and global solar panel prices were also high. Rooftop solar was paid 22 rupees for 8 years and about 16 rupees for the balance period in feed-in tariffs before the currency crisis. To encourage rooftop solar, the solar price was then raised to 37 rupees due to the recent currency crisis. Minister Vijay Sekar said that the price was supposed to be revised every three months based on economic parameters and a policy decision was made to continue it for a year. He added that we now observe the world's solar panel prices have fallen steeply, the dollar rate has fallen and interest rates have also fallen. Meanwhile, Minister Vijay Sekar said a time when the average generation cost of CEB has fallen 38 and 39 rupees to pay 37 rupees for 20 years for rooftop solar would not help bring down generation cost in future. Minister of Agriculture Mahinda Marawira said that Sri Lanka plans to cultivate 20,000 durian plants of two hybrid varieties for export purposes. Arrangements have been made to cultivate two varieties of hybrid durians which produce high yields in a short period of time. According to Sri Lanka's Export Development Board, fruits produced in Sri Lanka are mainly exported to the UAE, India and the Maldives. Sri Lanka currently exports durian to the Middle East. Amarawira stated that both of these durian varieties do not grow as large as other dominant durian trees but are two of the most productive varieties. Consequently, these varieties can be cultivated even on standard agricultural land. According to former Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison, Australia is committed to ensuring the freedom of navigation across the Indian Ocean and to supporting the sovereignty of regional countries. He made this statement during the main lecture of Australia and the Indian Ocean at a discussion organised by the geopolitical cartographer held at the Taj Samudra Hotel in Colombo. Former Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison emphasised that countries in the Indian Ocean region should prioritise their national needs and avoid regulations that could undermine their sovereignty. During his speech, Morrison highlighted the strategic importance of supporting small and developing nations in the Indian Ocean and Australia particularly in the face of geopolitical pressures. He also pointed out that in the current world, economic factors have more influence on political events and decisions than change in political beliefs or ideologies. Morrison highlighted the challenges governments face in managing the new economic environment characterized by expansionary fiscal policies and high interest rates. Let's take a short commercial break. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. 
Some favorable updates from the Colombo Stock Exchange now as it records a day ending with gains. Both indices displayed a positive sentiment at the end of today's trading sessions, reversing a long-standing negative trend from previous days. To get the insights of today's market performance, let's connect with Akhil Esufali from Capital Alliance Securities. Today, the Colombo Stock Exchange concluded on a positive note compared to the previous trading session. Investors were showing signs of reluctance to participate due to a volatile market conditions were on a slightly positive sentiment. The market ended at 11,597.19 points, marketing a 57.36 point increase from the previous session with a turnover of 540 million rupees. The SL20 index also experienced an upward movement of 20.78 points to the end of the day at 3,377 3, uh, 3, points. Notable institutional engagement was observed across various sectors with high turnovers recorded on Dialog, Axiata PLC and NDB Bank. The top five gainers for the day were SMB leasing, non-voting, Blue Diamonds Jewelry, non-voting, Industrial Asphalts, UB Finance, and Bense Royal Resorts. The top five losers for the day were Ceylon Printers, PLC, Satosa Motors, Colombo Fort Investments, PLC, Hunter, Com Hunter and Company, PLC, and Ceylon Beverage Holdings. The first two days of the week at the Colombo Stock Exchange have been starkly different with yesterday hitting lows and today recording gains. How will the market performance be throughout the next sessions? Well, we pose that question to Dimantha Matthews, joining us now from First Capital Holdings. The market uh, has been on a declining trend in the last few days. Uh, but today I saw a bit of a uh, turnaround in the market with uh, bargain hunters uh, starting to come back into the market. But the biggest uh, question is uh, whether uh, this can uh, go on uh, or last for a longer period of time. So uh, there is a bit of uncertainty still uh, in the market uh, despite the uh, deal uh, relating to the uh, external debt. Uh, restructuring so investors are awaiting some amount of clarity uh, as to when the uh, elections are uh, going to happen and also how the uh, earning season is uh, going to be however a uh, positive uh, mindset is now starting to set in uh, among the investors as uh, we see the uh, result season coming closer and also, we are seeing some amount of uh, results uh, also getting released uh, during the last couple of days. So, uh, this is setting uh, a positive uh, trend uh, towards the market, uh, well, despite the uh, some amount of uh, uncertainties that are still uh, lingering around. Uh, because the IMF, uh, though the external debt restructuring has been submitted it has not been given the imf uh, go ahead as yet uh, however uh, some amount of positivity is now starting to get created so we believe that there could be some amount of uh, turnover uh, getting improved uh, during the next couple of days with some amount of positivity Gold prices moved very little in Asian trade today, hovering around 11-day lows as traders sought more clarity on U.S. politics and monetary policy, especially ahead of a Federal Reserve meeting next week. Spot gold rose 0.1% to $2,398.38 an ounce, while gold futures rose 0.2% to $2,399.40 an ounce. Among industrial metals, copper prices fell today, extending steep losses in recent sessions amid growing economic uncertainty over top copper importer China. The yellow metal was nursing a sharp drop from record highs over the past week. 
Oil prices were flat today after an European Central Bank official hinted at a possible rate cut in September, offsetting pressure from renewed hopes of a ceasefire in the war in Gaza. Brent crude futures for September rose 18 cents to $82.58 a barrel. The U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude for September climbed 16 cents to $78.56 per barrel. Oil prices declined in the previous two sessions. In the U.S., some players are also betting on September rate cuts by the Federal Reserve. According to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, the Sri Lankan rupee slightly depreciated against the U.S. dollar today, with the buying rate rising from 298 rupees and 89 cents to 299 rupees and 29 cents, and the selling rate from 308 rupees and 19 cents to 308 rupees and 54 cents. However, the rupee has seen a significant depreciation against other global currencies. Let's check the current exchange rates now. Short commercial break now. More updates right after this. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Abans Auto, a division of the Abans Group, has launched a new electric motorcycle in the country named Yadea. Manufactured in China, Yadea is an electric scooter type motorcycle that has become one of the best selling models in numerous countries, including Europe. To cater to the growing demand and provide better accessibility to customers, Abans Auto has recently opened the latest Yadea showroom in Kalambuto Union Place. This showroom offers customers the opportunity to purchase motorcycle as needed and provides facilities to buying for spare parts, ensuring comprehensive support and convenience. Currently, Abans Auto has established 80 sales centers nationwide where customers can acquire Yadia motorcycles. Additionally, there are approximately 450 service providers available to assist with the maintenance and support, reflecting the company's commitment to customer service. Looking ahead, Abans Auto has ambitious plans to expand its reach by operating around 150 sales across the country. This expansion will further enhance accessibility for customers, making it easier for them to purchase and service their Yadia motorcycles. Furthermore, a delivery mechanism is being planned to bring motorcycles directly to customers' homes based on their orders, adding an extra layer of convenience and customer satisfaction. Scope Cinemas has announced that reservations for the first day of screenings at the country's first IMAX theatre, equipped with the latest technology, have already been completed for the afternoon showings. Reservations are still available for the evening and morning showings, according to the announcement from Scope Cinemas. The IMAX theatre is scheduled to open for the public viewing on the 26th of this month. Following months of speculation, Scope Cinema has finally opened up IMAX tickets for the upcoming movie Deadpool and Wolverine just days before the premiere. Tickets for Sri Lanka's first IMAX 3D experience are priced at 4,875 rupees during the peak hours and 4,575 rupees during the off-peak hours. Back in May, the company teased it was preparing to launch Sri Lanka's first IMAX theatre experience either with Furiosa, a Man Back Saga or Deadpool and Wolverine. Last week, Scope Cinemas officially announced that its IMAX theatre at Havelock City Scope Cinemas Multiplex will open with the upcoming Marvel movie. This tech will be coupled with IMAX Possession Sound for breathtaking audio and IMAX Immersion by Design Seating with stadium-style seating for a clear viewing at every seat. 
Sri Lanka-based glove maker Dipped Products PLC said it has opened a market office in Mumbai, India as part of efforts to strengthen its presence in key markets. India is growing at a compound annual growth rate for GDP of 7.5% and is the world's fourth largest economy. DPL Managing Director Pushpika Janadira said that the Indian market has consistently demonstrated resilient growth and with the opening of their seventh marketing arm in Mumbai, joining their existing offices in Italy, Poland, France, the Middle East, Thailand and Sri Lanka, they're now ideally positioned to serve this market. Dipped Products is a subsidiary of Haley's PLC and makes specialized gloves used for safety in various industrial fields. Ceylon Bank and LOLC Insurance recently came together to celebrate a remarkable milestone of their 11 years of unwavering partnership. This significant occasion was marked by an elaborate award ceremony, a testament to the strength and success of their collaboration over more than a decade. The event was a grand affair bringing together key stakeholders from both organizations to reflect on their shared journey and achievements. The award ceremony was a highlight of the evening recognizing exceptional contributions of the top performing members from both Ceylon Bank and LOLC Insurance. These individuals had made significant impacts through their outstanding efforts in generating the highest bank revenues and achieving the best sales figures. Since the inception of their collaboration in 2013, the two organizations have built a relationship grounded in trust and mutual respect. This partnership has been instrumental in fostering growth and success for both entities and the ceremony served as a celebration of this strong and reliable alliance. Let's take a short commercial break. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Global shares were mostly higher today in Asia after U.S. stocks closed broadly higher as big tech stocks took back some of their recent sharp declines. Tokyo's Nikkei 225 recovered from early losses, edging 0.1% higher to 36,621.28. Chinese markets declined with the Hang Seng in Hong Kong down 0.1% to 17,620.16. The Shanghai Composite Index shed 0.6% to 2,000. 946.63. South Korea's KOSPI advanced 0.5% to 2,777.98, while the S&P ASX 200 jumped 0.7% to 7,987.90. All three major U.S. stock indexes closed higher as investors returned to mega-cap growth stocks. President Joe Biden's decision to end his re-election campaign also influenced yesterday's stock market performance in the U.S. Wall Street's main indexes closed higher on Monday as investors returned to mega-cap growth stocks, helping both the S&P 500 and Nasdaq recover from their worst weekly performance since April. The Dow added three-tenths of one percent, the S&P 500 climbed more than one percent, and the Nasdaq rose more than one and one-half percent. Shares of NVIDIA finished up after the chipmaker was working on a version of its new flagship AI chips for the Chinese market that would be compliant with current U.S. export controls. Also influencing markets was U.S. President Joe Biden's decision to end his re-election campaign. Sissel added that she still thinks the market expects Trump to win in November. Stocks on the move included cybersecurity firm CrowdStrike, which plunged about 13.5 percent after a software update from the company sparked Friday's global tech outage. Shares fell 11 percent on Friday. And Verizon Communications fell 6 percent after a second quarter revenue miss. NVIDIA is developing a variant of its latest flagship AI chips specifically for the Chinese market to comply with existing U.S. export regulations. In March, the AI chip leader introduced its Blackwell chip series with plans for mass production by the end of the year. NVIDIA is working on a new version of its flagship AI chips that is meant to avoid U.S. restrictions on sales to China. 
That's according to the sources. They say the new silicon will be compatible with Washington's export controls. There was no comment on the report from the company. The AI chip champion unveiled its Blackwell semiconductors in March. It's thought the new product for China will be a derivative. The US tightened controls on the export of chips to China in 2023. It wants to prevent breakthroughs in supercomputing that could help the country's military. Recent reports claim more controls are likely, with Washington pressuring allies like Japan to impose further controls too. Since the US curbs were introduced, Chinese tech giants including Huawei have sought to develop their own alternative semiconductors. That's a challenge NVIDIA would like to defeat, with China accounting for over a quarter of its sales before the recent tensions began. But that is all from us here at the Nightly Business Report. We'll see you again tomorrow with the latest updates. Until then, I'm Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. Thank you very much for watching and good night.